Okay, we are at uh, section 2.7, analysis model, particle under constant acceleration. So let's uh, uh, share the PowerPoint. We're gonna start here. Before I begin, I just wanna, I want you to take a look at these three slides on the side and uh, look at them intently. The first one is a uh, plot of position versus time. The one uh, under it, the middle one, is a velocity versus time. And under that is acceleration versus time. And the time scale on each of these uh, all line up. So you can see that the position, the position graph is a kind of a parabola, uh, or at least a curve. And you can see that the position is increasing with time. The spacing between the 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 x's is increasing as time increases you can also see the slope of the uh the graph that's the velocity the slope is the velocity and you can see see that the slope at the uh t equals zero is different than the t shown there the the slope is greater at the t than it is at zero so the velocity is increasing. Uh, and you can see, if you go to the next one, certainly there's a velocity at VX, uh, VX initial and that at zero. And you can see that the velocity at T is much greater. And the slope here, the slope in the previous one was, the slope of the position graph was uh, velocity. The slope of the velocity graph is acceleration. Well, it's a constant acceleration, and if you go to the bottom, you'll see that the the acceleration is a constant value. It's constant acceleration. Um, so uh, again, the the uh, derivative of the position, uh, which is the slope, is uh, velocity. Uh, the derivative of velocity, which is the slope, is acceleration. So velocity is the first derivative of position. Uh, acceleration is the first derivative of velocity. Acceleration is also the second derivative of position. Okay, uh, now let's look at some of these equations. So uh, it's uh, uh, there. Acceleration is equal to Vx final minus Vx initial uh, divided by delta t. And we're going to assume that the, the t initial in this case is zero. So we can just say uh, t minus zero. Uh, not always going to be the case. Um, okay, so uh, if we solve uh, for Vx final, we'll see that Vx final is equal to the Vx initial plus acceler acceleration times t for constant acceleration. This only applies to constant acceleration. Now, so what is that saying? That's saying that the final velocity is equal to the velocity that you start with, the initial velocity, plus any acceleration times the time that that acceleration has been enforced. Uh, so the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Okay. Um, now the average velocity is the initial velocity. Um, the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two. That's just an average. That's if you have two values. Let's say you have a grade. You have you know a ninety and you have a hundred. You take the 90 plus the 100, you get 190 uh, divided by 2, you've got a 95. That's just an average. So the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2 gives you your average velocity for a constant acceleration. Um, okay. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so the average velocity is delta x over delta t. Uh, it's the position divided by the time interval involving it. It's also, the average velocity is also equal to the x initial plus x final divided by 2. So let's see what they're going to do here. The x is equal to, delta x is equal to x final minus x initial. Um, uh, delta t is equal to t final minus t initial. And if we start at 0, then the t initial is 0. So all you end up with t. Um, so x final minus x initial is equal to um, vx 
the velocity in the x x the average velocity in the x direction times t. In other words, if you're um, if you're traveling uh, 30 miles an hour and your time is uh, one hour, then you travel 30 miles. It's just the average velocity times time. Um, so it's one half your uh, average velocity. Since average velocity is also listed as one half uh, v x i plus v x f over t, that's a uh, also gives it to you the average velocity times t. Okay. So x final equals x initial, whatever position you started with, plus the average velocity times t. Vxi plus Vxf divided by 2 is the average velocity. That is for constant acceleration. All of these are under constant acceleration. Okay, let's look at another, uh, another equation. Vx final equals Vx initial plus acceleration times t. This is similar to what we did for position. Uh, the final velocity is whatever velocity you started with plus the acceleration times the time interval that it's been enacted. Uh, so substitute into the previous equation, x final equals x initial plus one half uh, vxi plus vxf t. The, the other way of saying that, x final equals the initial position plus uh, the average velocity times time. Now let's substitute um, for uh, Let's substitute, what are we substituting? We're substituting the uh, one half uh, Vx initial plus Vx final. For, they're using the Vx final that's uh, over here, Vxi plus Axt. They're substituting that for X final and they're gonna come up with an equation. X final equals X initial plus uh, Vxi uh, times T plus one half At squared. You're going to use this equation a lot. So, and they're going to have a list of all these important equations. So the x, x, the final position is equal to your initial position times the uh, initial velocity times the time interval that has been enacted plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Um, we'll get to that. Well, don't, don't be intimidated by this time squared. Uh, we'll, I'll have an explanation for that. Um, might as well do it now. Okay, let's say you travel. Uh, we, we don't really have a problem with that. Let's say uh, you're traveling at, at uh, uh, or your velocity is five meters per second. Oh, well, let's just do gravitational acceleration. Uh, 10 meters per second uh, per second. That means that every second you're going to increase by 10 meters. So it's 10, instead of saying 10 meters per second squared, say 10 meters per second per second. Uh, so the first second, you're going 10 meters per second. The second uh, uh, second, you're going 20 meters per second. Uh, the third, you're going 30 meters per second. Uh, so it's, a, it's easier understood if you say meters per second every second than meters per second squared. So don't be in intimidated by the second squared. So people say, what is second squared? It's just per second, meters per second every second. Okay, I think I finished with this slide and we'll go on with the next one. Now, uh, v, Vx final is equal to the initial velocity uh, plus the acceleration times time. And the uh, time is equal to, um, they're solving for time and you get uh, Vx final minus Vx initial over the acceleration. Now we substitute uh, into X final equals x initial plus the average velocity times t, and you get um, uh, where the t up above is vx final minus vx initial over ax. They substituted that t, and you get uh, vx final equals, uh, not vx, x final equals x initial plus vx, v, x final squared minus vx initial squared divided by 2ax. Um, and that it becomes an important equation that you will use. Now, when would you use this? Notice that there's no t value. So if you don't know the time, if you don't know the time involved, you can often use this equation where you, if you know the final velocity and you know the initial velocity, a lot of times the initial velocity is zero uh, if you're starting from rest. Uh, so uh, 
the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared times twice the acceleration divided by the, the difference in position, x final minus x initial, for constant a. All of these are for constant acceleration. Um, so vx, these are just, I, I think they're going to, uh, let's go back. Uh, vx final is equal to vx initial plus acceleration times time. Position, final position is equal to initial position times the uh, velocity. That should be uh, initial velocity in the x direction times t plus one half the acceleration times t squared. Um, now, if vx when ax equals zero, vx final equals vx initial, and it's just equal to. Uh, oh, I see what they're saying. They're just saying that. Um, it's just Vx, so uh, x final, given these two equations, uh, when acceleration is equal to zero, then Vx final equals Vx initial, is equal, just equal to Vx, it's constant velocity, and x final equals x initial plus Vx t, an equation we've already had before. Now, these are the kinematic equations you want to, you welcome to print out this page and keep it with you uh, because these are important uh, equations. X final equals, VX final equals VX initial plus uh, acceleration times time. Average velocity is equal to VX initial plus VX final divided by two. X final equals X initial plus the uh, average velocity times T. Uh, x final equals x initial plus the initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared and then the equation that doesn't have time involved is uh, the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared times twice the acceleration times the uh, the displacement x final minus x initial all of these equations 213 through 217 apply only under the condition of constant acceleration okay that's an important point constant acceleration only okay in the figure match each vx versus t graph on the top with the ax versus t graph on the bottom that des best describes the motion okay so in A, we have a velocity that's always increasing. Uh, it looks like the initial velocity is zero, and then it increases from there. So we need, uh, and it looks like it's increasing at a, at a constant rate. So if it's a constant rate, um, the... Um, the slope of the Vx over T is a constant line, so we need an acceleration that's constant. Which one of those is, is constant? Well, it's E. E has a constant acceleration. So A would be coupled with uh, E. Now, in the next one, we have a um, velocity that is ever-increasing. Um, uh, but I mean, the one in A, it's always increasing, but it's increasing at a constant rate. Here, it's increasing uh, more rapidly as you go on in time. So that means the acceleration is increasing over time. And so that would be D. So B is associated with D. And then the last one's kind of easy. You've got a, a constant acceleration and then no acceleration. So that would be C and F. Um, you can see the acceleration is at some value and then it suddenly drops to zero. So let's see if we're right. A to E, uh, B to D, and C to F. A to E, B to D, and C to F, correct. Um, and now, uh, you can use this. You can see that the, this is a constant acceleration. This is the motion diagram. And the little red ball um, has increased spacing. Uh, the purple arrows, which are represent acceleration, are constant, and you can see the velocity is constant. Now that that happens quite 
often you can think of a, a car accelerating at a constant rate along a straight freeway. You can think of a, a dropped object in the absence of air resistance. Um, and we're going to get to that. Uh, you can think of an object on which a constant net force acts. Uh, force equals mass times acceleration, constant acceleration. If you have a constant force, you have a constant acceleration. And you can think of a charged particle in uniform in a uniform electric field, which will be the second semester physics uh, chapter. It says here, chapter 22. And you can use these equations of motion for all of these situations. Okay, and I think that's uh, the end of, of this portion. For after this, we're going to go to freely falling objects. Um, okay. Let's stop the share, stop the video.